What's up people of the internet? I'm the big boat here with yet another video. In this video we will be testing the Intel Celeron N2840 which is a CPU based on the Silvermont architecture and part of the Bechero family of power efficient processors. It has 2 cores and 2 threads and it has a frequency of up to 2.58 GHz. The Celeron N2840 has the Intel HD graphics Bechero as the integrated graphics, which have 4 unified shaders and a frequency of up to 792 MHz in the N2840's case. It's also based on the Intel HD 4000 architecture by using the latest Javax suite available. You also have 4 GB of RAM in single channel mode, as well as a 500 GB hard drive for the operating system and also in which the game is installed. As for operating system, we are using Windows X Lite Redstone Revival version 2. You can find the full description of the specs in the video description down below. Guys, I can't believe this game works on these specs. It somehow freaking works. The game that we'll be benchmarking today is Fallout 4. Let me explain how I got it working. The fixes that I'm going to explain right now only apply for Intel HD Graphics 4000, 2500, Ivy Bridge and Bay Trail. First things first, you can only run Fallout 4 in windowed mode with these specs. I've tried to get it working in full screen mode and even after doing everything that I will explain, it just refused to give me anything other than black screen. So windowed mode is the way to go, preferably windowed borderless. Second, go to your game directory and right click on the fallout4.exe file, then click on properties. In the pop up menu, go to compatibility and set the compatibility mode to windows 8. For the third step, we need to go to the registry editor. In your windows search bar, type recedit, then click on what has popped up. In the registry editor, navigate to HK local machine, system, current control set, control, graphics drivers. On the right, make sure to right click and choose to create a new DWORD 32 bit value. Name that value TDR level. Make sure you're typing it exactly as I do. Hit enter and make sure the value is set to zero. Then restart your PC to apply. If you don't do this step, the game will crash during loading. For the next step, we go into the config files directory of the game, which is located in Documents, My Games, Fallout 4. Here, open the Fallout 4 custom.ini file with Notepad. In it, copy these values which I will provide in the pinned comment as I'm doing it. If you don't do this, the textures will be glitched up, making the game practically unplayable anyway. Finally, we're gonna be running the memory duct up before watching the game and I've set it to clean the RAM once you should reach as nice percent. After doing all these steps, it's time to watch the game. Listen carefully here. As soon as the game window appears, left click on it. You may have to do it repeatedly a few times or you may simply have to hold left click for some time. It might take a few attempts to get it working correctly, but if the rotating loading circle disappears and you hear a little static sound, then you're good to go. Just wait for a while and the intro and eventually main menu should appear. Since we can only play in windowed mode and the taskbar will cover the bottom most part of the game if you want to lower the desktop resolution to make the window maximized, I recommend pressing your windows button, then right clicking on your taskbar and going to the taskbar settings. In these settings, enable automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. And that's what it takes to get Fallout 4 running on this Celeron and its Intel HD graphics. Let's finally get straight to the point! We're first going to try it out with the stock low settings.
And now let's try it out at 800 by 450 which is actually the lowest resolution allowed by default. In order to make the game window bigger, we're going to lower the desktop resolution to 800 by 600 which you can easily do by right clicking on your desktop then choosing display settings. From there, lowering the desktop resolution is as easy as it looks. Finally, let's try out a low-end config mode. This is the one that we will be using, I will provide the link for it in the pinned comment too. These are the two files from the mode that we need to copy and replace in the config file directory of Fallout 4. After that, we're going to do a small modification of the Fallout 4 prefs.ini file. Scroll down a bit until you find the eye size, full screener, borderless stuff etc. I'm going to change the first eye size value from 480 to 400. This is actually up to personal preference, but I just like the 640x400 resolution because it's a widescreen one. Then we're going to change the full screen value from 1 to 0, because remember, the game doesn't work in full screen mode. After that, we're going to go back to the game directory and we're going to run the game not from the launcher but directly from the fallout4.exe file because if you try to launch the game from the launcher the changes done by the low end config will be reverted. I recommend creating two separate shortcuts for convenience and to distinguish them well. Finally, let's lower the desktop resolution to 640x400 to make the game window look like it's maximized. Go back to the display settings 
where you should have an advanced display settings option. Then go to display adapter properties, list store modes and choose 640x480. Click on OK, then apply. Now go back to the normal display settings and choose 640x400. Remember you can always revert those changes later. And that's it. Let's see if Fallout 4 is actually playable with the low end config.